What is a cross product? The cross product takes two vectors and returns a third vector that is orthogonal to the original first two vectors that you fed in at the beginning. All right. What does orthogonal mean? The best way to describe orthogonal is using the words perpendicular, right angle, or 90 degree angle. Let's look at the x, y, z axes on the Cartesian coordinate system. The x is orthogonal to both y and z, and all the other ones are also orthogonal to each other. They are all 90 degrees apart from each other. The cross product takes two vectors to calculate the third orthogonal vector. Whenever you have two vectors, it will define a flat surface, because that's all it takes. Any two unique vectors that aren't completely zero will define a plane or a flat surface like a table or a single polygon on a geometry. And that brings us to normals. If you've used any other 3D program, you've probably heard of normals. If you don't have the correct normals, your model may not look nice on the screen. In this animation, I'm forcefully overwriting the normals so they aren't perpendicular, and this results in terrible shading with my object. The lighting hasn't changed and everything is exactly still. The only thing that, it, that is changing are the normals because I'm overwriting it. I wanted to illustrate how normals are important in 3D graphics. Normals are the directions each primitives are facing on the model. Is it facing up or is it facing down? Maybe even sideways. The point is the normal is always perpendicular to the primitive face. The normal vector is 90 degrees to the primitive. Let's go back to the cross product and see how all this relates. Here's a sneak peek at what's to come and all the basic concepts and what we will be able to do after this mini series on cross products. I start off with my usual buildup of basic concepts and show you how the cross product can be applied in different types of scenes. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start off with a polygon sphere and you can see here that every single face, every single triangle face, primitive face has its normal, its own unique normal, pointing outwards in the direction of the face. So let's take a look at this one over here. Make the background a little darker. Okay, so everything's a little bit more visible. It's pointing outward. The normal is a 90 degree angle to the primitive. It's always perpendicular and it's or orthogonal. This is what the cross product is all about. Now, if you look closely, this triangle has two vectors. Let me get rid of that template. Where are the vectors? Well, let's take a look. So we have three points here, and we also have uh, three vectors. The vectors are, that's one vector, there's another vector, and here's the third vector. So the, the edges are actually vectors. And when we have two vectors fed into a cross product function, it will return another vector, which is a vector that is perpendicular to the primitive, or the two vectors in this case which is the um, blue arrow you see here. And it's the same vector as the normal. Now I'm gonna move this around. And you'll see that the normal is always perpendicular to this face, no matter how we rotate it. Now in Houdini, the normal, even though you see the normal in the viewport, it's not gonna show up automatically in the spreadsheet. So if we scroll over here to the spreadsheet, you'll see that when I, iterate through the points, the vertices, the primitives, and um, the details, we don't see a normal attribute. We have to add it in additionally. So I'm gonna drop down a normal node, and I'm gonna add the normals to the primitive section. So I'm gonna drop down that normal node, and over here, which attribute type, and we're gonna add it to primitives. Now let's look back at the spreadsheet. And let's take a look at the primitives. And indeed, we now have a normal attribute. Now, let me go back to the transform. And I'm gonna turn, rotate this, continue to rotate this. So I'm gonna change this, and let's look at the normal value again. In fact, let me pop this up, this. I'm gonna turn it around. You'll see that the normal attribute value is changing with while I change the position, the rotation of the primitive so that it's always perpendicular. It's always updating the normal so that it's always perpendicular to the face. 
Now watch what happens when I actually translate and actually move the position of the entire primitive. So I'm not going to be rotating it. I'm just going to be moving it around. The value of the normal is not changing. I know this last um, Z value is flipping back and forth. It's because of the float. It's rounding. The number of significant digits can sometimes be very long. And my bet is that the viewport is rounding the decimal value here to optimize the viewport display. The main values are not changing. This is negative 0 0.748 and this is negative 0 0.515. This is the Z value of the normal is always 0 0.416. That is not changing. I know the, the ending is flipping back and forth. That's because of the significant values which is something out of the focus of this video. So the value of the normal only updates when you rotate this. It only changes that. But when we translate it, it's always the same. It This, because it's always like being over here. Okay, this is when we need the grid back. Being, this primitive being over here has the same normal vector pointing in, in this direction as the normal pointing, if I move this primitive all the way over here, this normal pointing over here is the same normal. These two lines are the same normal values, but it's different. The normals change when you rotate it because the direction is completely different. So if I rotate this, now the normal is pointing over here. It is completely different. That's why this normal attribute down here in the spreadsheet is changing only when you rotate the face because that changes the direction of the normal value, which is the perpendicular value. And I want to get this concept into you because this has a lot to do with cross product. When you cross two vectors, the perpendicular value or the per perpendicular vector will depend on those two vectors. But when you translate it, it doesn't have that same impact as you rotate it. Let's take a look at another example where I have a simple grid that is also a single polygon. And I'm going to use this as an example to get two input vectors so that it's relative back to the face in order to get a stable normal vector or a stable cross product. We're going to take two vectors out of this grid. This grid actually has vectors on it, which is uh, which are the edges. There's a vector there and another vector over here. And again, the edges are all vectors composing of this grid or this single primitive. Now, I'm just going to concern myself with only two of them because we only need two vectors to feed into the cross product. And I'm going to take the cross product of two vectors. So I'm, I'm going to take this vector and this vector over here. So these two vectors pointing these in both directions. I'm going to take the cross product of that. And I want to see what happens or what's the result of that. Now I already have this set up, so I'm not going to go over all uh, the code over here and everything. So that's a little beyond this basic concept that will come a little later. I will make this a little larger so you can see it uh, to increase the font of the attribute wrangle. Highlight this text box. You see this orange, click the text box and then it'll get highlighted. You'll see this orange outline. Press control plus plus or control minus minus, which is the same hotkeys on your browser. Uh, here I have the cross product all calculated and all that fancy stuff there. And I'll show you what is the result of it. Okay. So the blue area you see here is the cross product result of the two vectors, the two red vectors here. And I've grabbed the two points from the grid, which are actually vectors. So points, every point has a position. Positions are vectors that has an X, Y, Z component and they're positional vectors. There's something you need to, need to know whenever you have two vectors. So this is a great example is that this grid has four sides, but we only need two sides to find the orientation of the grid, or you only need the normal or the cross product will tell you the orientation of the grid. Because if you know this perpendicular vector, you know, the orientation, you know, if the grid is facing upwards or it's facing downwards, the grid could be facing anywhere. This normal value or this perpendicular or this cross product value vector will define that orientation. Now, what happens if I take this grid and I move it? This is something you need to understand. 
I've only taken the position values of this point here and this point and fed it directly into the cross product. So in this little wrangle here, I'm not going to go get into too deep into this because this is uh, something I'm going to be digging more deeper into a later basic concept. But I've taken the two values of these two points and fed it directly into this cross product. And that gives us this blue vector you see on the screen here. Okay, that makes sense, right? Two vectors gives us the perpendicular value. Well, let's see what happens when I actually move the grid. So I'm gonna take this grid and I'm gonna move it around. Not exactly, everything is changing. Not the same thing uh, as our previous example. When I actually translated it, it the normals weren't changing. It only happened, uh, it only changed, the up, normals only updated when I rotated it. In this case, any movement to the grid changes everything. And this is when I have to bring back the grid, the actual grid on the display port. And let me reset this. Now, it so happens that this grid is placed directly on the center of the universe. It's di placed directly at the origin of the screen. So everything you see here, all the positional values are all positive because I've deliberately placed this in the positive x values of coordinates of the world. So there are no negative values. And it so happens that the point over here, this point over here, has the exact same value as it does on the grid. If, however, that only happens because the grid is sitting on the origin. When the, I'm gonna pop out the points, and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and isolate that point. So I'm gonna, this point here, I wanna pop this out as a spreadsheet so we can actually look at the positional values which is this. This is the positional value of that. Okay, so when we change this, the position of the grid, let's see what happens. Our positional value for that point in the corner has one, it, it's, it's moved, so it's no longer there. And also the value here is different. So this vector is actually changing. So we can't just plug in the positional values into the cross product and expect that it would work. The vectors has to be uh, relative to something. If we always want the perpendicular vector or the normal, we always want to get the normal of this primitive, we have to have a vector relative to the grid or the relative to the primitive. So in other words, I would need this vector instead of what we're actually getting is this red vector that's stretching from the origin all the way to that point. So the red vector, the red line you see here is, is what is actually happening, is the actual vector that we're feeding into the cross product. And that's the reason why it's not giving us the correct normals or the correct uh, result that we want. This blue vector is, the blue vector is pointing right here out of nowhere. It is nowhere near this grid. We need this green line here. We need this green vector, the same vector as this grid when it was placed at the origin. Now this isn't very practical as we can't move, every single time we move the grid, we get an incorrect value. So how do we fix this? Well, this brings us to the next step or the next example. Now here I have a very similar setup that has a grid, but this time this, this cross product example is not dependent on the location of the grid. Like it doesn't have to be at the origin space. Okay. So this is the same uh, grid setup, but the cross product is calculated a little differently. Now let's take a peek at that wrangle and you'll see that this is a little more, has a little bit more. Instead of just sticking the positional value of two points, this point and this point, we're actually taking the relative vector, a vector that's relative 
to this primitive or to this grid. You can see here V1, which is our first vector, is calculated by subtracting another vector and this point over here and subtracting this point V0 in order to get this red vector here. In fact, I will draw a line in order to calculate this green vector here. I take V1 and I subtract V0 to get a relative vector. So it's always this green vector here is always pointing in this direction. No matter where the grid moves, I'm always getting this relative direction. I'm always getting this edge of the, the grid. Now I do the same thing for V2 as well. So V2 is subtracted by V0 in order to get a relative vector. Therefore, when I, when I move the grid this time, no matter if we translate this, you can see that the blue vector, which is our normal vector, or the is always perpendicular to the primitive, no matter where we rotate it. So this is more useful because it's not so easily broken. It doesn't have to, it doesn't limit the location of the grid or it doesn't lo limit the location of the primitive. So getting the correct vectors is something very important that you have to understand when dealing with the cross product. It's not just simply as plugging in the positional values of the point. Another concept I want to explain is the direction of the cross product or the direction of the perpendicular vector because even if it's in this direction or in the other direction or this way, either way, it's still perpendicular. So it's 90 degrees on that side. It's also 90 degrees on the other side as well. So what defines the direction of the cross product? How do we know that it's going to be pointing on the left side of which side is the front and which side is the back or which side the arrow we're going to get? pointing to. That brings us to the right hand thumb rule. Now I made this little widget here or this um, HDA that's already available for download for uh, perk members. I'll put a link in the description and what this does it will just give you a small illustration of the right hand and you can anyone can use this at home as long as you have a right hand. You put your two fingers pointing in the direction of the vectors closely. So you can see here, this finger, the third finger, is pointing in the same direction as one of our vectors. And the other finger, the second finger, is pointing in the direction of the other vector. What's the point of doing this with our right hand? Because our thumb will naturally point in the direction of the perpendicular vector, which is the blue vector. So if you take a look here, this thumb right here is pointing in the same direction as our blue vector, which is our perpendicular vector, our cross product uh, result. So this is a way for us to find out the positive value or the front facing value of this grid by using, our, uh, using the right hand thumb rule. This will always work for any cross products. In the next video, I'll take things up a notch and repeatedly apply the cross product in the feedback for each loop to create a spiral path. And with further tweaking, it becomes a spring animation. Thanks for watching and sticking to the end.